I feel like my good morning cannot live up to that epic music that was playing in the intro. But good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Dev Chat today. I'm just sad you're not still twitching like you were a little a couple of seconds ago. I was dancing. To that music. wasn't dancing. That was like a spasmodic, like I thing was that was happening. I thought you were gonna have a seizure and fall over. <laughs> Dude, that's how you started to stream. Uh, welcome yeah. everyone to yeah. the Dev Chat today, May fifteenth, two thousand nineteen. I'm Will Hungerford, lead developer at Privateer Press. Mm -hmm. With me is Oz Gunover, head of development here at Privateer head Press. Head of development. Yep. That's what RiotQuest says. That's what the RiotQuest credits say. That's what's true. That's, you are the head of development. At least in RiotQuest. I mean, you are. You're my boss. You're Jeff's boss. You're the head of development. Mm -hmm. uh, we are development, your development team here at Privateer Press. If you've never joined us at a stream before, we stream multiple times a week. So every Wednesday and Thursday, mm -hmm. we always do 10 a.m. Pacific. Wednesdays is always Dev Hangout, where we, the development team, come on and talk about what's going on with the, the games, and just sort of chit-chat with those of you watching live. Mm -hmm. uh, get your paint on Thursdays with Jordan Lamb, where Jordan paints a new model, and talks to you about hobby tips and tricks. And then we have a couple special ones we do. So monthly, we have the staff showdown. You and I played Monster Apocalypse yep. on the last one. That's where the staff gets on, and we play the games we make, which means hopefully very soon you'll be seeing Riot Quest on the staff showdown. Uh, Primecast Live is where we get people f throughout the company that aren't normally on the streams, like Mike Valancourt, our art director, uh, Doug Seacat, uh, yeah. our, our lead it's writer. It's our variety show where we just we talk about a little bit of everything, upcoming yeah. conventions and things like that. Yep. And then uh, the we do have occasionally special shows, including this Friday we have a very special show. Doug Seacat and Josh Colon are going to be on for a lore hangout. So mm -hmm. if you want to talk about IK lore with Doug, and I have no idea what Doug's topic will be because that's usually how he does it. He has yeah. a topic in mind, and then he rolls yeah. out. And sometimes, sometimes the topic shifts depending on what the chat wants to talk about and that kind of stuff. Yep. Yeah. So before we get into any topics today, uh, we'll get into actually. Well, hold on. Let me talk about mini crate and lock and load mm -hmm. real quick. All the other announcements. And then we'll go over some some news that's happened recently. Uh, so first off, mini crate. I want to give everybody a heads up that this is the last week to order a Sixtius the Undamned. You have till May nineteenth. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, that model is going to swap over. The VIP is still the Bride of Arcadius, so if you do a six-month sub, you will get the Bride of Arcadius in your next shipment. And then uh, the, the newest Legend of the Five Rings mini crate model is uh, Moto Ch Chagatai. <laughs> Moto Chagatai of the Unicorn Clan. And uh, the VIP model is uh, Shoshiri uh, Sadako. Uh, which you get if you. I don't know why six. that Chagatai is the hardest one for you. You've, you've, I, can, you've, I always you've screwed been up. pretty good with almost all the other ones, but this one is just every time. So. Go to minicrate, mini-crate.com if you want to check it out. Uh, also, there are still some lock and load tickets available if you want to check out the event schedule and sign up. Mm -hmm. pplockandload.com. Uh, so, there you go. Come hang out with us, talk about stuff. Do this kind of thing in real life where we just sit around and we, we have hangouts where we talk about upcoming products or making products. We're, we'll do one for Riot Quest and one for War Machine and one for Mon Pac Dude, the Riot, Quest, the Riot Quest hangout sold out immediately. Yeah, we, had to, we had to enlarge... Make sure that we were in bigger rooms so that we could squeeze some more people into a couple of those hangouts. Yep. So uh, let's go over uh, some a little bit of news real fast. Also in chat right now, RuneWise says, so in the Riot Quest staff showdowns, do, do I inherit the Oz cheat mantle? You know how you like to cheat in games uh, live on stream and make things like up? I don't like to cheat. It just happens. I will not cheat in games of Riot Quest. You have my word. Well, you, you can't ever make promises like that. Cause, I, I can't. Because oftentimes what people think is cheating... <laughs> is remembering a rule after it's applicable and applying it. Like, there will be a time where someone in a game of Riot Quest will do a thing, and then, like, two steps later, you'll be That's like, wait a minute. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking you about, can't do we're that. We're talking thing. about your specific, I'm going to change this rule mid-game cheating you I do. do that You don't do that. Oh, very often. <laughs> so, a little, little bit of and a... On our Friday game... There was only one thing I, I, I rewound a tiny bit, and it was because you were beating me, and I didn't care. That's called cheating! No, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, cool. Uh, see, Pagani in chat says cheating implied intent. Well, you just said because you, uh, you were losing and I was beating you, you did it. Yeah. Because that's cheating. Because I had forgot, I, I had meant to move two units and I forgot to do it. And then at the end of my turn, I was like, oh yeah, I moved those two units there. But I was already losing pretty bad, so it didn't matter. It wasn't, it wasn't like cheating for a... Uh, for a victory. Sure, sure. If yeah. you if you cheat and lose, it's fine. God no, that is uh, Privateer Press does not officially endorse cheating while you're losing. Uh, so a little bit of news. Uh, first off, if you haven't been on the the War Machine Hordes General Facebook group, uh, the Welsh Masters is coming up. It's a huge event, mm -hmm. and uh, Mark, uh, one of our players. Uh, 
went and basically did this huge like data breakdown of what everybody was playing per faction, what themes they were playing, and what caster was playing, and made super nice pie charts. So if you're interested in seeing what's going on at the Welsh Masters and sort of what the breakdown of all the factions and casters are, just to kind of get an idea and see what's going on. Because I always find it really fascinating how metas can change, especially regi yeah. regionally. Like sometimes yeah. in the States, you know, it's it's even more, it can be even more granular sometimes, but definitely when you look at like certain European metas versus like the Australian meta versus the American mm -hmm. meta and what's popular and what's not. Uh, so if you go to the Facebook group, you can check that out. Also for everyone that doesn't know, you know, we talk about Riot Quest a lot. There is a Riot Quest general Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook group that you can go join. In fact, I just went in there today and posted a sneak peek at one of the new uh, gear cards that's coming up, the Hyperspring Boots. So if you want to get more sneak peeks at like Riot Gear rules and models as they come up, go check out the Riot Quest General Facebook group. Mm -hmm. How uh, many people are playing at the Welsh Masters? It's 160 plus, if I'm not mistaken. I don't have that number directly in front of me, but I don't. Mark, just just tell me. They'll tell us in a second I in know. the chat. 190, according to Magno uh, uh, Magno Opus on on Twitch. So 190. Okay. Yeah. It's it's a significant, and the Welsh Masters has always been like a massive event. Um, I'm interested to see what coverage comes out of it, and definitely looking mm -hmm. forward to just hearing more and more about the event. The people that run it are top notch. It's always been a great show. So, uh, other big news for those of you that might have missed it: the Italian dynamic update occurred. Uh, it went live in War Room and on the website last Friday. Mm -hmm. The cards in the card database are being updated this week. There was a correction that happened to one of the Theme Force benefits that's also going to be corrected on the Theme Force PDF that's on the website. So you'll see that mm -hmm. all come soon. But uh, all of those things are available now. You can go check out your War Room for all the updated models and all the good, good stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, and, and, I, I love you so I much, mean, Oz. I mean, all those things are true. I'm just agreeing with you. Uh, I'm thinking about trying to snatch that pig again. Don't worry. It'd be fine. Don't leave Hamilton over here. Oh, oh now I can't he's not get, even, I can't get him out of your reach, though, because you're even huge. On what's, like, what's so far away? Uh, so before we jump into what's going on with the Steamroller CID, mm -hmm. Lars Malak says, Monpok news me. Uh, do we have any cool Monpok news to hand out right now? I don't we think gave a lot of Monpok news in the show, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. Something like that? Right before the, right before the Steamroller CID started? Mm -hmm. Um, so there's no real news that's that's big and exciting we, that I'm going to spoil because Lock and Load's also coming up. We're going to have some products there that are pre-releases. We're also going to do a hangout and talk about a bunch of stuff. I believe we're going to show off some concept art for the future and those kind of things. I think the biggest news is that the solicitations went out, and I know that people like Jay from Discount Games post the like some of the mm -hmm. images from the solicitation to go to the retailers in those Facebook groups. And so people got to see model renders of a lot of stuff that they might have missed before or hadn't seen at all. Yeah. And a lot of the Ubercore monsters, their model renders were in those solicitations. Uh, there's also a Monster Apocalypse fan group on Facebook where you can mm -hmm. check out most all that stuff. So if you want to go see like the first look at the Ubercore, what are the Shinobis called again? They're called Shinobots. The Shinobots? Yeah. And the Carno... Carnotrons. Carnotrons? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can go check out all the Ubercore models, and we see in chat, chat right now Legionnaires and Gypsy Tronic saying that Ubercore looks amazing. They do look yeah. super, yeah. super nice. They're, uh, they're, if anybody's unfamiliar with what Ubercore is, they're like evil robot versions of other things. And by evil, I mean like they're capitalists. They're doing things for their own reasons. So like Cybercon is a robot version of Terracon. Shinobots are robot shinobis. There's a Robo Brontox, little crawly guy with a, a light on his back. What's his name? That's his name, Robo Brontox. Robo, it's not bro, bro, no, Brotron? No, no, it's not a Brotron. That would be pretty cool. And, and they will get other things, like there's an Ubercore jet that's just a jet. It does, it's not a, like an evil version of something else, it's just a jet. They have a jet. Yep. So, yeah. So, uh, let's, let's talk about CD real fast, and then you and I are going to talk a little bit about what we're doing in, in play testing during mm -hmm. this chat today. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Steamroller CID is on its last week. It ends this Friday. Uh, I unfortunately will not be here on Friday, so uh, we'll do my, I'll do my review after I come back because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to be on vacation Friday and Monday. Um, but there's still plenty of time to test. Uh, what happened mainly was we did an update to the ADR, we updated one of the objectives, and we updated one of the scenarios. Mm -hmm. So where we're at right now, let's start with the scenarios. Uh, King of the Hill and Bunkers, which we're not going to bring up on screen, have just been getting really good uh, feedback. Everyone that's, that played it and everybody who responded to the type form, it's been really solid and everybody seems to be overall happy with them. Anarchy, though, did have a change. So, Tony, if you'll bring up the original version of Anarchy. So this is where Anarchy started. And mm -hmm. overall, we were getting pretty good results, but the main complaint we were seeing and the main issue we were seeing was that people were able to put incredibly durable, huge base models with certain lists 
dead center and easily contest both of the flags with little to no, no problems. So talked to a variety of players, read everybody's feedback, and decided that the fix would be quite simple if we just simply separated the flags a little bit more. So Anarchy got updated to the version you see on the screen now, that's the version two, where they basically moved back and towards the side table edge, respectively, two inches both ways. Uh, thus far, the feedback we've gotten has been very good, but I'm going to put a call out right now if you're participating in CID. We need more battle reports on Anarchy. Uh, we have uh, a few on the actual forums and the people that are playing and sort of like messaging me on Facebook and stuff like that, though I do really prefer that you go on the CID forums and report it there. But we do need many, many more uh, battle reports specifically on Anarchy. So if you get the chance, please go in there, get a game in, post up your results, tell us what you think. It would be incredibly helpful because after this week's done, we do our final review and lock, and then this is what's going to be going live uh, when Steamroller updates after lock and lock. Mm -hmm. uh, see if we got any questions. Aside from people commenting that I did get a haircut, yes, because I was looking like a shaggy dog on the last one. Uh, just a couple questions about RideQuest. I'm going to talk about RideQuest here in a little bit, uh, but we'll talk about that after we finish all the Steamroller stuff. Uh, so... The other thing that changed was a slight change to one of the, uh, one of the objectives, and that was uh, a bunker, which Tony will bring up on the screen now. Uh, so very, very small change. Uh, not bunker, I'm sorry, dugout. The anchor rule got a little bit of a buff, and mm -hmm. it's been interesting because the little bit of a buff has been slightly contentious with people. Uh, effectively, it is a movable object for a single model without the no knockdown. So yeah. now you can't be moved by a push. You also can't be moved by like a slam or a throw or anything like that. Uh, so we wanted, because people were like, I don't see any reason I would ever take this. We wanted yeah. it to definitely be situationally useful. Now we're seeing a little bit of people saying they feel it might push out some casters that they won't ever be, like, be able to use them in the meta, which I think is a bit of hyperbole because it's still an objective that can be destroyed. Yeah. And yes, the model can get the anchor rule and then run away. So if you're playing Butcher 3, if you're playing Ron, right, you have this one model that's going to sort of like jump up and then run off. Yeah. But we, we need to see more testing on Dugout. So far, Observatory and Treasure Chest, there was a lot of comments on Treasure Chest in the beginning, but it is kind of like settled out where it's okay. A couple people thought it was going to be way too strong in the beginning. Yeah, I think a lot of people didn't really think about the once per game angle on it. And they were, they were worried it was going to be really powerful all the time, but it's just that one time. Yeah. yeah. And... A uh, thing that's come up during CID that where it's not in the, the actual CID, but it will be added to Steamroller. There's been questions about how, when you choose objectives. Language is going to be added to Steamroller that indicates exactly the timing on choosing objectives. Mm -hmm. Because right now the timing is a little bit uh, yeah. vague. And so we can definitely, we can definitely fix that. Uh, so, yeah, we need to see more testing on Dugout and Anarchy. Luckily, Anarchy is a uh, scenario that uses objectives. So yeah. I'm hoping to see a lot of people combine the two and, and get some results in before Friday. Uh, Red Death asks, how are the reviews on the treasure chest objective? Overall, very, very good. The initial scores that we got, because there's the back end system that people report called the type form. This stuff that people don't publicly see, only we see. Uh, in addition to all the information people provide, there's a star rating where people basically rate something one to five stars. None of the objectives got less than four stars. Everything was overall in a very good place. And treasure chest, I believe, was right at four stars. Um, now, we don't just look at a star rating and stamp and say, okay, it's at four, boom, we're done. We read all the results. But it gives us a good barometer yeah. initially of where things are. And Treasure Chest was, was in a good, good spot. Uh, ADR got some changes. Uh, Crick's ADR had a change with, with Scavarus changing over to Gore Shade 3 for better play into the two available theme, host, uh, theme forces of uh, Dark Host and Ghost Fleet. And Circle has gotten uh, another ADR change after discussion with the team. However, we'll let everybody know that the Circle ADR is, again, still under review, and we are considering some, making some more changes. There is a mm -hmm. possibility of a dev chat happening before this uh, CID ends to talk about some other possible configurations we are considering. Uh, we're considering rolling it back to what it was week one. Mm -hmm. We're considering rolling it back to what it was week one and then changing Grail out for Baldur 1. Uh, and we're also possibly considering swapping out one of the themes for Bones. Uh, and then re-looking at the casters. But that's got a lot of things we want to consider, and we have to compare it to the rest of the field and what that would do. Yep. Uh, so there's a possibility you'll see a, a dev chat go up, possibly today, maybe tomorrow, uh, so people can buy, provide feedback, or you'll just see an update. The dev team has more consideration to discuss. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are. So if you've got any more testing you want to do on the Steamroller CID, please get it in by Friday and keep an eye out for a yeah. possible dev chat. Not saying it will happen, but... But maybe. Maybe. 
Mm-hmm. Anything you want to add, Oz? No. Cool. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> let's talk about what we've been playtesting lately. Sure. What have you been playtesting lately? I'm going to make you talk on the show. I've been talking about, I mean, let's just like we just talked about, uh, Ubercore is going to be out this summer. And there's possibilities that some models get pre-released at lock and load. Mm-hmm. Um, what what those models are is up to production to a large extent, so I'm not going to promise anything. But there are a few Ubercore models I have to lock in before lock and load just in case they're there. Yeah. So we've, we've been playtesting Ubercore. We're also playtesting the Empire of the Apes stuff, which uh, is coming out in June and July. So it's it's just got to be done. Now, anyway. And the ex- excitement I've seen from the community about Empire of the Apes has been very high. Yeah. Well, kaiju and giant apes go together really well. Mm-hmm. And uh, an entire army of apes, because little apes and big apes, is fun. Sure. And it's also a different take on... So King Kondo is very much a wild giant ape. He's got broken fist cuffs of some sort, like he's been chained to something. Mm-hmm. But the other apes are stealing human technology like cannons and and things okay. and making weapons out of them. So it's not just a bunch of wild apes. They're kind of right, intelligent. Right, with giant and, rocket yeah. launchers and stuff like yeah. that. And um, General Hondo, the second monster, which we've shown, I think the, the solicitation image has has the render, he's got armor on and is carrying a giant scud launcher on his shoulder and firing missiles and stuff. So like he's completely not that jungle ape kind of mentality. He's a... He's like, like actually a tactician. He's, he's like a... Yeah. He's like a... The apes have a civilization. It's called the Empire of the Apes. And they're smart and they can probably communicate with humans. And have we shown stuff. any of the rules for any of the Empire Apes models? We have yet? not shown any rules because they're not quite locked and done yet. Okay. So for people wondering about Empire... They've seen a lot of the models with those renders you're talking oh, yeah, about, right? Yeah. Uh, if you had to talk to the, the play style in general, like the str- more of the strengths and weaknesses of Empire of the Apes... Like, what are they in uh, very broad strokes? So like, one of the things about them that I've been trying to make them is kind of a toolbox, but also having, having a lot of functionality to cover multiple bases, okay. but not necessarily excelling any of those one things. So they're an all-rounder? So they're kind of an all-rounder. So, okay. like, Carnadons are a protector unit that fights probably the best in melee of any other protector unit. Yeah, like one elite Carnadon and two standard Carnadons will do a damage point to just about any monster yeah. in the game. Yeah. And easily easily a unit. So the apes have a melee unit too. It's the assault ape. It's the one in like the power armor yeah. with the clamps and stuff. Like a power lifter? Kind of like like, a like power, alien style? Like a power loader. Kind like of, like yeah. Ripley? Yeah. And they are not as good dice-wise as Carnadons. Sure, because they're on the same agenda. But... They have an ability that lets them roll power dice when they attack. Okay. So they can't generate power dice when they make an attack with power dice because that would just be moving a power die and putting it right back. Sure. But if you really need to hit with them more, you can burn some of that monster energy that usually only monsters have access to so they, to make sure they can do something. They can possibly hit better than a Carnadon or more reliably than Carnadons. Yes. But, it, at a but cost. it's going to, yeah, if you want to burn, if you want to have four of them attack, a monster, and you want to burn four power dice to do that, you can. Okay. But that's that's getting rid of your resources to a certain extent. Right. So, so you've got to be careful with you can't because you're even if four of them attack units and kill all those units, you're not going to get those power dice back because that that power dice cycling would be too powerful. So on average, they're below Carnadon, but they can spike above Carnadon. Yes. And that's sort of yeah. the balance. So those kind of things of making them interesting and useful and coming at things from a different angle. Also, there's some new abilities um, in the protector side that's going to be on some of those ape units that, that protectors haven't had access to before. Do they, so that's the like, so we talked about those guys which sort of like melee beat down, but yeah. we talk about people holding rocket launchers and General Honda with the giant scud missile and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. So is there is there a heavy ranged element and I guess is there any like sort of like mobility tricks? Is there guerrilla warfare in the Empire of the Apes? So there's a little bit of guerrilla warfare, but it's not mobility tricks. Okay. So they have high mobility and those kind of things. Sure. Kondo has grappler. So there's a little bit of, of mobility there, but there's not really a bunch of crazy tricks. Although a model that's not coming out yet but is in playtest does have one mobility trick, but I'm not going to spoil that because sure, sure, sure. it's a little bit further out. But they do have a unit with a gun, the, the, the apes with cannons. They're mm-hmm. just a shooty unit. Right. And they're one of the most basic shooty units in the entire game, but they can also punch okay. So they're a melee and gun unit, which is that kind of like all comers situation. Okay. And then they have the rocket ape, which can scatter shots all over the board 
because he's got a giant rocket launcher on his back. When you say scatter shots all over the board, like he, he can make multiple attacks. Oh, cool! But he's got the lone wolf rule, so he can't combine for multiple attacks. Neat. So yeah, so they have they have a, a bunch of different random kind of functionality. So when these guys come out next month, if somebody's looking to pick up Empire of the Apes, what units? What units are the core? Like if you say so, guard, right? You like pick up G tanks, yeah. right? Like get yeah, a, yeah. at least a blister of G tanks if you didn't pick up the starter. Like what is what is the the mainstay of apes. So they have two blisters. Yeah. One of them is the apes with cannons, and one of them is the assault apes with the parallel suits. I believe the cannon set, this is on the solicitation, so I believe the cannon set comes with the rocket ape, and the assault apes come with an infiltrator ape, which is an okay combatant, mm -hmm. but he's also a spotter, and he turns off cloak, and so he's a toolbox model. Oh, so he, turned, he lowers the defense against range attacks, and he also makes it to where you can shoot. Yeah, if, he, if you're close to him, you're easier to shoot and you can't cloak. Got it. Sweet. So yeah. Uh, a couple of chat questions. Uh, DGC says, any play testing on the IK RPG? Nothing we can talk about right now. Yeah. DGC, sorry. Uh, Ponto Hornblower asks, are there any teasers on the new Brew model exclusive? Again, not yet. No, one of the, no teasers about that model yet. One of, the, one of the things coming up, everybody, is that lock and load is next month where we have our keynotes. Yeah. And so it, yeah. there are certain spoilers that it can be a little difficult for us to, to, to give out this early where normally we might be able to just because we've got the big show coming out and there's a ton of information coming out of lock and load. And we want to save some of that mm -hmm. as special secrets and surprises for the, the people in attendance at Lock and Load to make the show right. good Gyps for them. Gypsy Tronic asked about clues of what ability the Empire of the Apes have, the building has. And we're not going to talk about the building right now. All right. Let's talk about what's going on with, uh, with Riot Quest. Yeah. So Riot Quest, we've been testing a lot. Uh, yesterday, I was testing a four-player game on one of the new maps that's coming mm -hmm. out. So there's obviously the map that comes in the starter set. But one of the new maps that I'm currently working on is a pair of pirate ships yeah. that are crossing each other uh, with three gangplanks that allow you to cross between them. Mm -hmm. uh, with the spawn points and all the treasure being equally distributed between the two chests. And two of the treasures actually being in the water on the gangplanks. Yeah. So we played a lot of 1v1 games of Riot Quest on it. Tony and I did. Tony, our video mm -hmm. producer, who's actually running the stream. And uh, it's right there. it worked fine. Yeah. So, but it was a more constricted, more like claustrophobic map. Well, it has it has like hallways. Right. The the regular map people have seen it. It's a big sort of circle, and it's just a field of hexes. And there are things in the way. You can't walk through the treasure piles, and you can't walk through the teleport beacons and stuff. But they're just individual hexes to just kind of get in the way. Yeah. But on this one, you've got two fairly large things, and then there are basically hallways between them. And so there's a lot more movement restricted. And a movement, a core movement rule in Riot Quest is you can move through people in your own crew, you can move through mm -hmm. friendly models, but you can't move through enemies. Uh, only rogues have the class ability called Sneak that says they can move through enemies. Yeah. So when you're playing Gubbin. different... Uh, what's that? It's all about Gubbin. Gubbin, and Gubbin is... Yeah. Gubbin was ridiculous on the map yesterday. Yeah. Uh, so when you have these three gangplanks that sort of like are choke points, being able to block them off with stronger characters like Captain Crawtooth or Orsus the Chain or James... Mm -hmm. uh, is really strong, but then having people like Gubbin be able to sneak through them to get the other boat to go complete whatever objective is, is also really strong. Yep. And we, we did a lot of testing on that. We've also been testing um, these models, obviously what they do in War Machine, mm -hmm. because every Riot Quest model, or Riot Quest is its own game with its own rule set, and it has nothing in common with War Machine in terms of playing it. Well, people have started seeing the James stack card, yeah. and so you can see from that card how obvious that difference is. Yeah. Because there's nothing really shared between the way that that card works and the way a War Machine card works. And if you want to see more of these cards, I was talking about it earlier in the show, there are Facebook groups. Go to the Right Quest General Facebook group and mm -hmm. check it out. But we also have to test all these models cause in, in War Machine as well because we're, we're co-developing rules for them in War Machine. Yep. Uh, real fast, there's a, a question I'm seeing from Whalecats. How many maps-ish does Riot Quest have so far? So there's one map that comes on like poster stock inside mm -hmm. the box. And that was to keep the box a smaller size and to keep the cost down. Yep. I think the plan right now is that every other map we ever put out for Riot Quest is all going to be neoprene mats. Well, unless we do leagues, because usually we give yeah. multiple copies of a map in leagues, yeah. and those will more than likely be paper because they're cheaper that way. That's but product-wise, product wise, more than likely neoprene mats yeah. will be what we will be focused on. So right now I'm testing a pirate ship map, and then in my head I want to do a couple more. I can tell you one that I want to do is a map that is on the back of a dragon's corpse. Uh, mm -hmm. Like probably Torox head, and that will introduce like hazard 
hexes that do damage when you enter into them or other bad things. Yeah. I could see like an insane workshop with like pistons and wearing blades that also like throw people around the Well, the conveyor map. belts and stuff too. Conveyor belts. Fun. Yeah. And I also kind of want to see like a destroyed scorn house with like sand that's come inside and like yep. there's ancestral guardian chunks everywhere and like maybe make that into something as well. Uh, but right now definitely like two maps early on and many, many more more coming. Uh, Nate asks a really interesting question. We sure. haven't, I don't know if we've ever talked about this oh, so ever. Can, there are two defense stats on a Riot Quest model card. So people are seeing the cards and they got a couple questions. Yeah. And like you said, there's a, there's a def stat one and two, usually a, oh, it's always a lower number slash higher number. Uh, when you attack someone, mm -hmm. if you roll the lower number, you do a point of damage. If you roll the higher number or higher, then you do super damage, which is two points of damage. And most models in the game have a stamina between two and four. So you have some control over the dice you get to roll because the dice in this game are a, a resource you have to allocate basically mm -hmm. to, to make the heroes activate. You may have turns where you don't activate all of your heroes. Uh, you may have a turn where you go full in on one hero and then your opponent can mm -hmm. spend their turns activating a, a little bit on each of the other ones. But it's regular damage and super damage, those, those split values is what, it, what they're talking about. And Seb, uh, when Hungerford talks about playing a game on Torx Corpse, remember, Riot Quest is not mainline Iron Kingdom's canon. It's, it's one of those, like, what if? It's like, a, it, what if Superman had been born in Russia? Yes. So or instead of America, it's kind a, of. It's like, a split timeline. It's a, yes. Yeah, you, well, you, you pull an Infinity Stone out and it creates a whole other timeline. Yeah, so in fact, if you want to learn more about the timeline. <laughs> Sorry, uh, spoilers for movies. Uh, there is an insider going up today that I wrote that is actually talking about the Riot Quest storyline and how it happened and how we got here and what's going on. So make sure you check out privateerpress.com and read the insider. It also has a look at a new piece of art from the rule book that's probably mm -hmm. one of my favorite pieces. It's yeah. this custom, like, wide shot of, like, seven or eight heroes all fighting in it's, Thunderstone Fortress. It's the heroes in action. Yeah. yeah. It, the, like, the cover is a pose of the heroes. This is an action shot of all the heroes fighting and jumping around. Yep. But talking about what we've been testing lately, and Neil Rose just hit us with the oh snap. Very, very nice. Talking mm -hmm. about the things that we've been mm -hmm. testing lately, uh, we have also been testing these models in War Machine Hordes. Yeah. So, and some of these have really powerful abilities, but we also have to make sure that they're they're balanced, but they're fun and interesting. We don't want to just make like just straight combat. Yeah. Combat solos that don't do anything, or combat attachments, or combat casters. Because spoiler, some of the upcoming heroes are also going to be war casters and warlocks in War Machine and Hordes. But, but not the butcher. Not the butcher. The butcher is a solo. But for example, uh, Balthazar Bamfist, the Rulik dwarf you see. Mm -hmm. Or did I say Rulik dwarf? The Rulik, the, the Rulik dwarf from Zoo that kind of has like the genie look to him. Uh huh. Uh, you know, he's a mercenary Rulik solo. Yep. Uh, he's speed five, decent defense stats. I think he's like 13, 16 with five damage boxes. Uh, he's got an okay punch. It's got beat back on it. But his main thing is he's got Battle Wizard. If it ever comes up, that's a, that's a minor, like, cool sure. thing. Yeah. But he has three spells that he can cast. And one of them is Empower. Mm -hmm. One of them is Give Force Barrier to a friendly faction model slash unit. So your Merc units are now picking up Force Barrier. Mm -hmm. And then the third is Teutonic Shift. Then speed five, sometimes, you know, you might run up, charge somebody, punch them, kill them, battle wizard, tectonic shift. Great. More often yep. than not, his main thing is he hangs out in the back line, throws out empower as you need it, which we know is a strong ability, throws out force barrier as you need it, which we know is a strong ability. And then if he gets into combat, he has like another mode he can he can swap to. Yeah. Some right quest models in their War Machine of Hordes iterations are gonna be like that, just generally, generically useful models that have some fun stuff to them. And then some of them are going to be far crazier. Uh, yeah. And I just mean like they're going to do stuff you haven't seen before. There's models coming up that are going to introduce something that's going to be unique to Riot Quest models only in War Machine Hordes, which is a loot mechanic, where it basically works like a coin mechanic you've seen on Rock Bottom and, uh, yeah. and Damiano, except they don't start with the coins. They gain them by doing certain things, and then they have a very specific use they can spend those coins on. For example, Dez, has, uh, Dez can dig in. Yeah. And in War Machine Hordes. And she has a rule called Dig for Treasure that says if she begins her activation dug in, she gains a loot token. Then she can spend loot tokens to boost attack and damage rolls and do some other stuff with her bazooka. Other characters have loot tokens, for example, like the wolf with no name, mm -hmm. which is the upcoming uh, Skinwalker bounty hunter. Yep, and, uh, and that's his name. He, yeah, it's called the wolf with no People name. People are not like, what's his real name? Yeah, that's, he, his, that's his real name. That's his real name. He has yeah. prey, and he gains loot tokens every time he damages one of his preys. 
Uh, so I forgot the name of the roll off the top of my head, but I think it's called like uh, Wanted or something like that. Mm -hmm. And every time he damages his prey, he gains a loot token. And he can spend those loot tokens again to do really, really cool things. Yep. And that's kind of what we're looking to do with the Riot Quest models in War Machine and Hordes is bring some of their flavor from Riot Quest, but also just make them good, yeah. solid, fun models to play with. Yep. So uh, let's see if we've got any questions. Uh, Oswald Dog says, is Chuck Dogwood a warlock? No, he is not a warlock. Um, let's see. Uh, somebody's asking about a time anomaly that hit Hill Valley 1955. I think they're referring to Back to the Future. I don't know, maybe not. Uh, pig tank spoilers? Okay, I'll give you a pig tank spoiler. For Ride Quest or for, for Ride War Machine? For, I'm going to give you something about... So the pig tank's name is Leadfoot and Treads. Mm -hmm. That is the name of the pigs that have stolen that tank. Mm -hmm. They're going to be a unique one because in War Machine and Hordes, first off, in, in Riot Quest, they have one of my favorite abilities. They're, Which one? they're a gunner class, but they've got the ability called Ride Along that says when you move them, when you, you spend a die to run and move them on the board, mm -hmm. if they started adjacent to another friendly, after they're done moving, you can pick up that friendly and drop yeah. them off next to yeah. them. Basically, they hop on the tank and take a ride. That's not my favorite rule they have. I like point blank better. Oh, point blank just says you get a bonus to yeah, red die. Yeah, like, you... I drive up to you and I just fire my cannon at your face. Well, they have their, the name of their gun is Snub Nose Cannon. Yeah. So they roll up on you point blank and they do extra damage. They are a gunner, so they can shoot at range, but they want to get point blank and mm -hmm. blow you up. Uh, but... In War Machine and Hordes, they won't just have one set of rules. They're going to have two sets of rules. We're going to release them as Leadfoot and Treads, which is a character pig tank. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to release Pig Tank, which is going yeah. to be the FA... I think we put it at FA 2 or 3. I can't remember off the top I of my head. I think it's 2, but, but that's still in playtest. FA 2 solo, uh, minion partisan troll bloods. Uh, obviously, Leadfoot and Treads is the character version, has a slightly upgraded uh, yeah. weapon loadout, and gives veteran leader to the other ones. In case you're wondering how you differentiate them, when you get the actual model... Uh, and you build it, you can build it with the hatch open and lead foot and treads up there screaming, or you can be able to build it with the, the, the latch closed so it's just a tank, yep. a pig tank. Mm -hmm. And the character version, and the version you want to play in Riot Quest, is the one with the, the characters mm -hmm. popping out and screaming and sort of stuff like that. So I'm interested to see people run pig tank companies. All tanks all the time. All tanks all the time. Yep. I think it, we did drop it to FA2 or 3, but it, a that. while it was FA4, so that you could run Leadfoot and Treads in Ooh. four of them. There's like, they are seven points a piece, but they're also like, they hit really hard. They've got like yeah. knock down on the treads and then thrash on the gun or vice versa. It's in play test sure. right now. Sure. Like they run up, they roll things over, and then they just blow them up. Mm -hmm. They're the equivalent of like, no, they're, they're pretty long range. They're not like slug gun range, but they hit really hard. It would be funny to make them slug gun range. Neil, Neil Rose says, thank you. You're welcome, Neil. Uh, and Rexigar says, any hits about the Gator solo? Well, this will be the last hint we give out. Captain Crawtooth is coming. Uh, in Riot Quest, he's one of the only fighter class heroes that has a range three melee weapon. So your weapons in this game are melee or ranged, and they've got mm -hmm. a range on them. That's how many hexes away you could be when you fight. Most melee weapons are range one, which means it has to be one hex away. Most guns are range three, which is up to three hex away. There's no facing, there's no line of sight. Captain Crawtooth has a range three melee weapon. And why that matters is gear upgrades, which is like loot you get and treasure you get to upgrade your heroes and make yep. it better, sometimes will only specifically make melee attacks better, sometimes they'll only make ranged attacks better, or they'll add utility. There's also defensive tech that works only against ranged and melee, that kind of stuff. Yep. Uh, Crawtooth has the drag ability in Riot Quest. that says if he hits somebody, you can move that model two hexes, but they have to end closer to you than they started. So Crawtooth can walk up, swing three hexes away, bop somebody, then drag them two hexes closer. The gear that's coming with the uh, with the James model, the gear that people have seen, yeah, is the, the telescoping tel blades. The telescoping blades upgrade that says you get a bonus red die on your melee attacks, and your melee attacks get plus two range. Mm -hmm. So if you put that gear mid game on Crawtooth in Riot Quest, mm -hmm. he swings five hexes away. Yep, and that is like Tony so and is he, Jeff so Olsen is he, love to do that. By the is way, is he tying the hook to the telescoping blade like a fishing line, or is he attaching the telescoping blade to the hook? Like, I, I imagine he's attaching end? it like a scope. Oh. He's just stabbing on top, and then he's okay. grabbing his hook, he's looking through the end of it, okay. and then uh, he's yeah, just sure. throwing it really hard. Sure. sure. And then he hooks onto somebody and whoop, yanks him in. Mm -hmm. In War Machine and Hordes, he's a Gatorman privateer solo, and good news, he has no sleeping on the job, Gatorman. You're welcome. Uh, other than that... Well, that's also still in playtest. Yeah, it's still in playtest, but it's fine. 
Uh, he also has, uh, you know, uh, he has Dragon, his War Machine Hordes version. He has Snacking. He's like a, a pretty solid combat yeah. solo, but yeah, more yeah. importantly, no sleeping on the job is, a, is, is pretty good for Gatorman. Mm-hmm. So that's all the spoilers we're going to give out for today. Are you sure? Yeah, if you want to come get more spoilers, if you just want to talk to us, and more importantly, if you want to play Riot Quest, because we will have a version of Riot Quest that I will be demoing as much as I possibly can, mm-hmm. make sure you come see us at Lock and Load, please. So let's check out uh, chat real fast and see if we have any talks to have here. Uh, they want to know if we will spoil any more stuff about the Oblivion narrative stuff. I don't know if there's anything we can say I would moment. imagine also Doug might talk about that in the lore chat coming up on the 17th. That's true. Yeah, wait, come, come see Doug's lore chat on Friday if you want to talk more mm-hmm. about Oblivion or have some questions for him. Uh, Rusty Goblin Miniature says, no blockader spoilers. No, I'm sorry. We don't have anything to say about the blockader right now. We will as soon as we can. Just not at the moment. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, Bookburger also asked about IKRPG books coming up. Uh, I don't have any news I can give with you at the moment. We're definitely not ignoring your, your questions. Just nothing that we can say uh, at the moment. Um, Matthew Bunting says, any considerations towards changing the themes for the Crix ADR? No, at the moment, we're pretty happy with where they are. I think if anything else changes, it might be a, a few small caster changes. And we're really focusing on what we're going to finalize the circle ADR at mm-hmm. the moment. Overall, we're, we're, we're landing in a pretty decent spot on next season's ADR. Uh, Striker911 says, what's being painted tomorrow and get your paint on, Tony? Do you know? No, Tony doesn't know. So come, come join it's, us. It, it's uh, an Infernals model. Infernals model. Uh, Refugee says, will structures be moved to scoring models? No. We actually talked about that internally, about what that might possibly do, and they will continue to contest, but at the moment, we're not looking at making structures into scoring models. Uh, and Rusty Goblin Miniatures asks, Cephalix in Riot Quest? You're done doing spoilers. I'm done doing spoilers. I thought. Absolutely. Why wouldn't we put Cephalix in Riot Quest? Oh, I thought you said you were I, absolutely done doing spoilers. I know I was lying. Yeah. I love Cephalix. Of course, there's a Cephalix in, in Riot Quest. <laughs> I also, um, before we leave, I want to highlight one thing that we basically just told people, but to reinforce. Yeah. When you buy a, a Riot Quest model, yes. wh- whether it's the five in the starter or individuals in blisters, mm-hmm. every Riot Quest model comes with a gear card. So James comes with telescoping blades. She comes with a gear card and a hero card. Yes. Yeah. So you get a stat card for your hero, but you also get a gear card. Yes. And the cool thing about Riot Quest is every gear card works for every hero, basically. They're all neutral. Yeah. You can put them on anybody. Yeah, so th- when you build an army, you're playing a certain number of heroes and then an equal number of gear cards, and those gear cards can be done anything you want with. So James doesn't, like, the telescoping blades aren't James's weapon. Just like we talked about, Crawtooth can have a telescoping blade. Yeah. Or t- Crawtooth's gear card can be used with anybody else. And if you don't bring Crawtooth, you can still bring the gear card that comes with them because they're not associated with the characters in any rules way. Yeah, and that and list building in Riot Quest is super simple. Yeah. Minimum five models in your team, maximum ten. You only have four in the arena on the map at a time. Uh, there will be formats released that uh, will put other... This is like out-of-the-box most casual Baseline, play. Baseline, yeah, yeah. Pick between five and ten. Then however many models you brought, you get one gear card for every hero. And this is out of your collection. So if you own... 13 models and you have mm-hmm. 13 gear cards and you decide to play 10 heroes, you'd pick 10 heroes and you'd pick 10 gear cards. That's going to be the baseline game, right? Yeah. And you'll, you'll always play 10 and 10 in the baseline game. In the upcoming OP formats, we intend to do stuff that have like special formats like everybody plays six heroes, one hero from each class. Or I'm hoping to later on, once there's more heroes out, introduce stuff like a draft system mm-hmm. where you put down the heroes and the cards and then you and your opponents take turn drafting heroes to build your team yeah. and then drafting gear to build your gear cards and stuff I, like that. That's how I want to play the game multiplayer just for fun <clears throat> is I want to have one of every hero and then, and then when out. the two or three of us get together we're like, well, I'm taking James this game and there's not going to be another James on the table. Like, I, I like the idea that eventually there'll be enough heroes in the game that you could play three or four players with just one set of heroes. Yes. It'll be a little while before it, that happens. There, you know, I've, I've already developed 30 heroes for the game. But and, they're not all and, coming out. And all their War Machine of Horrors at rules. Uh, yes, they're not all coming at launch. But I will. T- people have been wondering, we've talked about the 5 to 10. This question has come out a lot. The starter set has five heroes in it. And they're like, well, are we not going to have a bunch of heroes to get up to that 10? 
the initial wave of models, I think you're going to have a total of like 12 heroes between the starter box mm -hmm. and what comes out in like the first month and a half. Yeah. So the starter box comes out and then just a bunch of new people yeah. come out. We are front-loading the schedule a little bit, but we're not putting out like 30 models yeah. in the first. Like I believe James will be out, Orsis the Chained, uh, Boomhaller Solo Artist, Gorman the Mad, Black Bella the Duchess of Dread, and Widget Tinker Extraordinaire, mm -hmm. I believe. Now remember, all that is based on production, and if one of those models gets held up because of something in casting or whatever, then it might get swapped. So never count all that stuff as a definitive promise. But generally solicitations, which will begin solicitating that kind of stuff, that August, September kind of stuff pretty yeah. soon, because we're usually three months out from solicitations. So when a solicitation comes out, that is as close to completely true as we can get, but still sometimes like model cards don't come in right or whatever and, and things have to shift around. Yep. A couple questions that popped up. Jacob von uh, Loiterbar said, Loiterbauer, Bauer? <laughs> Sorry if I butchered your name, my friend. Uh, if I buy three of the same Ryquest models, can I bring three of the, the same gear cards that came with it? No. When you build your salvage team, you cannot have anybody with the same name and you cannot have any gear cards with the same name. Mm -hmm. So you can't have five telescoping blades. Uh, they're all one-offs. Uh, Rikers yeah. Iron says, will Kickstarter backers of the art book be getting their James before street date of the general release? Yes, they're actually already shipping, and a couple people have already posted images of them getting their James mm -hmm. and the model. So you should absolutely have it soon. Uh, Mike Carey says, is it a minimum of four models per player? It's a minimum of five models per player, but each player only has four in the arena at a time. Basically, you have your bench. Mm -hmm. You have your cooler, which is when your heroes get knocked out, they go in the cooler, and you have to roll every turn to see if they wake back up and go back to your yeah. bench. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got four in play. So when a hero gets knocked out, they go in the cooler. Then when it's your turn, you spawn somebody from your bench back in the arena. You always have four. Uh, and then at the end of the round, you roll to see who wakes up out of the cooler. It goes to the bench, making them available for spawning later. Or if they stay knocked out, and they have to miss a whole round of play as they just lay on their butt. Depends on how, how badly they were hurt. How long they got to stay in that Pokeball? It's, it's more like a freezer. So, sure. All right. That handles most of the, the, bit, the questions we wanted to hit on chat. Everybody, thank mm -hmm. you for joining us. Please um, join us tomorrow as well for Get Your Paint On with Jordan Lamb, and especially this Friday. We have a very, very, very special lore hangout. I want everybody to come hang out. We got Josh mm -hmm. Cologne and Doug Josh and Doug are going to talk about stuff. Yeah. Uh, we people, still don't know what the topic is. We don't, but people have been asking for a lore, a lore hangout for, for some time. Every time we've done one, usually because Dev was at a show, they've always been really popular. So this is a not over, it's not overlapping something because Dev isn't here. It's a show just for all of your requests. So come, come in. Make sure you, you come yeah. and watch as much as you possibly can. And uh, until next time, everybody, we will see you later on. Goodbye. One last interesting question.